What did we just do? I don't know. We la Yes, you do. You were there. <laughs> Are you recording a video right now? I'm recording yes. a video right now. GoPro. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Because we're so pro. We are so pro. We just can uh, <laughs> national championship. Venture race. Uh, race. Yeah, that was. Race together. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. Maybe the worst. The biggest stage and the best failure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Aaron, to answer your question, we raced USARA Nationals 2015. Uh, it took us about 28 hours. We've got like three quarters of the checkpoints. Uh, we made a couple sweet errors and we still pretty much had fun doing it. Yeah, I actually, yeah. for being kind of a very dramatic race for us, I actually had a really a lot of fun on this one. Yeah. I'm not really sure why, like what, like after the race, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well, like a after the race, I feel, I actually feel pretty good about the race where like some of the other ones, it takes me a few days to be like, oh, like I feel bit good about it. Maybe because you don't have to feel good about it, we did horribly. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's because, it's a good point. We, since we started off at the back, like everything is a win, right? We started, we started off in last place for the first two hours of the race. Yeah. yeah. And then, so after, nowhere to go there, but better. Slight correction. Well, I guess for the first two hours, yeah, you're right. We, we snuck into second to last, third to last, for a minute there. Yeah, for a minute. Yeah. We had to make sure that that didn't last long. I'm like, <laughs> you can't be the underdog unless you start at the bottom. It's true. You know, so. It's kind of like the movie Driven. Have you ever seen that? I hated that movie. Yeah, it's an awful movie, but, you know, <laughs> in the last race of the season, he comes back. Kind of like Talladega Nights. That's a better example. That's a better example. Yeah, yeah. Talladega Nights. Okay. We when Ricky Bobby did that yesterday, we didn't win, but it was close. Maybe, maybe in here. Uh, so what was? Let's see. What was each of your favorite parts of the race, or each individual person, your favorite parts of the race? Um. I don't know. No, Aaron, what about you? Uh, the, the bike, once you got into the like, mud groove and weren't sick of it yet, <laughs> the mud bike was pretty fun. Yeah. It had potential to be fun. Yeah. And uh, once I figured out to just slide all the way down the hill <laughs> on the trekking, it was fine. Yeah. Just sit down there. The most fun part was probably the singing. The singing was good. Uh, there was lots of yeah. singing. That really helped with paddle rhythms. I think we should practice. Yeah, that was. You did have your little paddle song. I, I was kind of up before. I was kind of trying to set the pace. Some of that. Uh, I don't know what mine was. I really liked it, a lot of it. Like the second paddle was really good. It was hard to to maneuver for me to maneuver the canoe, but it was still like we were fast. We hit the points pretty well. You know, got it done. We, what did we do? it? We say we did it an hour and a half, an hour and 45, or something like that. I don't remember what it said. Uh, yeah. And it was supposed to be a two-hour paddle, so we did well, well there. And I like the mountain biking for being so muddy and shitty, like, was not all that bad. Until? And until, until the second bike. Well, until everything fell bike. apart. No, until, yeah. Until then. Yeah, so the end, of, the end of the second bike leg, we were coming, we were going that way? At the end of the second bike leg, um, we were headed back to the transition area. We were headed to the transition area. Yep. And something started going wrong on my bike. Basically, and right when we started needing to, or right where we could coast for the first time in like three or four hours. Yeah. Our uh, hub decided it didn't want to coast anymore. Yeah, I had to figure out what was up with that. The hub, yeah, did not want our free spin anymore. So that was exciting because every time I would. About every other time that I, we, I would coast, the chain would pop, and every time I backpedaled, the chain would pop. Uh, so that was exciting. So we made it, but we were only, we weren't very far from the transition area, so we pushed out that to the transition area, uh, did the paddle, and then the next leg was another mountain bike section, but 
I thought, of course I didn't look at the map, but I was just kind of like hoping more. There was only two checkpoints, and I thought it was just straight back up the hill to the uh, to the resort. But it wasn't just straight back up the resort. It was, I mean, it was straight up a hill, but it was another mud slog up a horrible hill, and uh, and then down the other side. Um, down a worse hill yeah, down a with worse more hill. mud. Uh, so we made it through that, and actually managed to pass a couple teams while we were while I was pushing my bike most of the way. Um, and then we were about 2K from the resort on paved road finally, and uh, and getting to a part where we could really go fast again and not be a big deal that my hub wasn't working and the chain broke. <laughs> so. Because it was still a big deal that your hub wasn't working, and the chain decided that was. Yeah. That, that, that needed to happen. Yeah, and just yeah. drive the point home. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, that was exciting. so, you know, we were two hours off the leaders within three hours of the race, or something along those lines, uh, maybe four hours in the race, and we had bike mechanical problems, and some other nav errors, and we still passed 50% of the field, which in a national competition is pretty yeah. pretty good. I think that's why I feel so good about the race, is like, we had a really hard race, and I, I think we did okay for, yeah. for the oh, yeah. Yeah, so it was good. Let's see. Uh, we, we left about ninety percent of it out there on the course. We probably could have mustered up the extra ten percent, but after yeah. a, a brutal downhill creek schwack that was uh, kind of drove the point home, that just wasn't uh, wasn't going to be our day for victory. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We still did. There was one team uh, that dropped because the weather got to them, and it was just rain. You know, yeah, there was, I was looking at the USARA Facebook page today, looking for pictures. Look, I was looking for our pre-race picture, and I saw some of the updates. Yeah, one team just dropped because the weather got to them. They must not have dressed warmly enough for the rain or something like that. Like, so we never, like, a little, the morale was down pretty low after that big bushwhack at the very end, but, I mean, we never really quit. No, we were up deep there. So, uh, what was one lesson everyone learned from the race? Not just one thing that they're like, oh yeah, for next time. Orienteering. Orienteering. Work, work more on orienteering. Everything, Everything about it. It's a little more than what you just asked for, but... Yeah. Um, I would say bearings from uphill is crucial. Um, so that would probably be my one point, but... Navigation in general destroyed us this race. It was really tough navigation. There was a, did you see the Facebook update? There was one team that went up to that. We didn't make it to that point, but it was at the top of the hill, the chain rock, and they just like boom shot right to it, up the hill. Like it was, it looked pretty insane, but I was very impressed with that. <laughs> Aaron, did you learn learn something? searching around for that checkpoint, I kind of took a break for a few minutes. It was like, just leaned up against a tree, collected my thoughts. The one that we... 23. Yeah, the one we looked around for and didn't get. I still have it. I need to look at the map and see where that one was. I, uh, yeah, I know where... I know where... After we got about halfway down that gully, when I... Like, the gully started having really significant features. Yeah. I knew where we were and what we had done wrong. Um, what did we do wrong? We were on the, so there was a ridge. It went down just slightly, and that's where that re-entry was. 
and then it had that another ridge, and we were on the second ridge. Oh. But it was it started lower, so it was oh. like it went from higher down to re-entrance into like a small plateau, and then kind of humped up slightly and went down again. So it was like 20, 40 feet lower oh. than the other checkpoint, and so it would have been like looking downhill to our left, like the ridge to our left where there were some people searching around and there was people searching on our ridge and further away from us. Uh, I think what happened was I shot a bearing south from the turn on that map turn and that pushed us more leaning, more onto that, that right, the more western ridge. And once we were on that, we were looking on the west side of that, which was wrong. Shit happens. It does all the time. And had I, I not been so exhausted, and us all being kind of in our own places, going back up to the road and redoing it until we found it would be the the path to take to get that checkpoint. But life. Yep. Next time. Life is life. More overnight training center. Yeah, more overnight stuff. Have to happen. Schwack training. Yeah. Well, and my big uh, my big lesson was don't fight your body. My I figured out my knee problems. I've been having knee problems for basically the last half of the season, the last three or four races, last three races, and it was my running form. I was trying to overcompensate for the way I was running, and it was just causing me knee pain. And I stopped doing that this race, and I was you know a lot better. So. Nice fix that so next year I'll be even faster keep training that'll make the that'll make the rock hopping over lava rock faster that'll make the bushwhacking a little faster uh, don't you also need some adventure spectacles yeah I need some better glasses yeah. uh, some, for sure some contacts uh, that would help a lot with a lot of things especially at night it mostly affects me at night it just makes it that much harder to see what's going on. Uh, oh, anything else? No? One of our things we were going to work on from the last race, the Ben AR, was nutrition. And I think... We definitely and, did Yeah, we did a lot better on that. Um, I think I was within two hours of calories away from my goal which was still above, well above what I did, or even my goal was in Bend AR, so um, that was good for me. And I, none of us really bonked, I don't think. Yeah, my muscles were tired through a, lot, a couple yeah. things, but like I never was like, I just don't have any energy. Yeah. I bonked, well, no, I didn't bonk, but I, when I got tired, I yeah. was done. Yeah, you kind of were, you were kind of shuffling to... around a little bit. Yeah. I was too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, zombie. Zombie, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. It's always difficult to make that yeah. that turn. See, if we just were as fast as Techno, they didn't even have to worry about that. They were done before. Exactly. They got done before they retired, so. They yeah. got done way before we even got to. Yeah. Lots yeah. of stuff to work on. We would have, yeah. Lots of stuff to work on. Lots of what ifs, but yeah. but it was a good race. It was interesting to see Kentucky and uh, experience the experience the weird the rainforest rainforest in Kentucky. Yeah. There's a, a hurricane hit us during the race. Yeah, like, well, that was part of it too. I, I didn't even think it was a thing. Like I didn't think hurricanes came this far inland, but evidently when there's an adventure race going on. And I was thinking about it. So the weather was definitely a part of this race. And we talked about the mud. It was raining off and on the whole entire time. And I think what was happening is the hurricanes spin and they've got arms. Yeah. And so every so few hours we would hit an arm and then we'd get a gap and we'd warm up and it wouldn't be as wet. And then we'd hit another arm and it just comes in really strong and you get a bunch of rain. So it was exciting. Yeah, definitely interesting. This is... Even after all the races in the Northwest, this was the first one that where rain was a significant factor in, yeah. the, in the race. So, but we all stayed pretty warm, so that was good too. 
Yeah. Like, I mean, I was. Yeah, I think we learned some clothing that is necessary for racing, staying warm, rain pants. Rain pants are awesome. have rain pants on the paddle. I could have put, put my pants on them. Yeah. They weren't rain pants, but I, they were a bit warmer. I just wanted to save them from the I had an extra vest with me that I didn't put on, but if it would have gotten any colder at night, like, that would have been a lifesaver. Yeah. Like, it, it, it was, at four in the evening, it was 57 degrees, and at midnight, it was, like, 52, I think. So it was not really that big of a temperature swing. Yeah. No. It's a lot easier to plan for. Yeah. Alright, well, good end of the season, guys. Good job. Woohoo!